Disney presents... From Frontierland... With Stetson so white and a pearl-handled gun swinging on his side. Texas John Slaughter made them do what they honor cause if they didn't, they died. Historians tell us the West could never have been settled without the cowpony, the frontiersman's axe, the six-shooter, and the Texas Rangers. Originally, the Texas Rangers were organized to protect the settlers from Indian raids. Later, they became law enforcement officers fighting outlaws and rustlers from the Red River to the Rio Grande. But it was here, in this pent-up corner of southwest Texas, that the outlaws were the boldest, operating in open defiance of the law. They knew the Rio Grande was the international boundary and that the Rangers' authority ended there. So, at the first sign of trouble, they could hightail it across the border and find sanctuary in Mexico. It was here, in this lawless, brawling border area, that John Slaughter began his fabulous career as a law officer. His turned up white Stetson and pearl and a gun were known both far and wide. The Ranger's badge he wore right well, making outlaws go and hide. For Texas John Slaughter made him do what they ordered, cause if they didn't, they died. John Slaughter's job is to break up the infamous Barco gang that has swept down out of Kansas, leaving a trail of bank robberies and stage holdups as they move southward across Texas. The real leader of the gang is Amanda Barco, a ruthless woman who uses her husband Al Barco as a front to keep the outlaws in line. Do you boys ever hear of Don Trask? Sure, everyone has. If Barco manages to cross the Rio Grande and ally his resources and men with Dan Trask's, they could create a combination too strong for us to deal with. Then we'd really be in the soup. Right. Well, we're just gonna have to stop Barco before he gets to the river. And stop them he did. But before the job was done, John needed the help of his fiancée, Addie. Stop it! Don't come any closer. Go on, she's not gonna shoot. Now come on, be a nice girl. Princess John Slaughter made them do what they ought cause if they didn't, they die. This program, based on the adventures of our true hero of the West, John Slaughter, shows that even the Rangers sometimes had to ignore the strict letter of the law to preserve the law itself. It's titled, Showdown at Sandoval. Get out of here, you pig! I'll give you something to ask questions about. Get out of here! Oh, Don't try that with me, boy. I'm on to you, you and all the rest of them. Coming in here snooping, asking questions. You get nothing out of me, you hear? Nothing! And that goes for all you rangers. Every cowardly half big one of you. Well, how'd it go, Ben? How'd it go? Didn't you hear it? Well, we heard something. Sound like the cook chasing our chicken dinners. She'd like to brain me. What a woman. Yeah, I guess you were too young for this assignment, Ben. I should have sent in a man with more experience. And charm. Charm? With a lady bank robber? A gunslinging widow of a, a widow maker? But still a woman, Ben. And as a woman, subject to the attention and flattery of a man. Oh. Tell me more, John. Tell me more. Well, you don't approach a woman like a, a maverick on the prod. Gentility, charm, those are the keys to a woman's heart. Listen to him. Well, he's right, you know. You know I'm right. I never saw charm to fail yet. This is a side of Mr. Slaughter's character he's kept secret from us, Captain. 
I guess he's used it all up on that girl he's engaged to. Yeah, don't you go mentioning to Addie in the same breath with that there Barco woman. Of course not, John. Let's confine the subject to Mrs. Barco and your charm. Oh, no. No siree, Bob. Not me. Uh-uh. But you spoke with such authority, John. And from such vast experience. Why, well, I was just speaking generally. I don't got any charm. Not an ounce. Not a grain. You know that. Everybody knows that. Yes, John, we know. But it's also important we know what Barco's plans had to do with Trask. He's the one we're after now. That Mrs. Barco hates me. I'm the one gun her husband. But the fair sex have always been partial to heroes, John. Why, it might even be that Mrs. Barco holds you in a certain, uh, esteem. Go on, John. Oh, come on, Captain. Get the necessary information. That's an order. Oh, uh, one second, John. Maybe these will help. <laughs> I hope he makes it, Captain. What I wouldn't give to catch Trask on this side of the border. That slop back to the pigs with my apologies. I, uh, <clears throat> I thought these might brighten up your room a little bit. <laughs> Go away. How are the uh, cigarillos holding out? I said get out of here. Sweet talk isn't going to get you anywhere either. Well, I only came in here to apologize for the way those others was behaving. Of course, if you don't want to be treated like a lady. Hey, wait a minute. Your name is, um, Slaughter, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. John. John. That's a nice name. Thank you, ma'am. That's, uh, soft, smooth. <laughs> Daisies are my favorite flower. How'd you know that, John? I just guessed. <laughs> he loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. How many girls have asked the daisies what they want most in the world to know, John? Oh, I wouldn't know that. Something you'd like to know, John? Something you, uh, you came to ask me? <laughs> oh, you sure are smart, Miss Barco. Smart enough to see right through me. Wouldn't you like to know about Dan Trask? The reason my dear departed husband and I were on our way to meet him? The uh, plans that uh, we have the future, things like that? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, Mrs. Barco, there is some truth in that. You say the daisies don't tell, John. They do say that, ma'am. Well, it's, it's true, John. Daisies don't tell. Neither do I. I never have. Well, you get out of here. Why don't you come around with any more of your sneaking tricks? Get your hands off me! I guess you have got more charm than I have. You lasted 30 seconds longer. What happened? She bit me. Well, you better get on over to the vet. Have that cauterized. That gal's poison. Well, you know it. Good news at last, boys. A lookout just telegraphed word that Trask crossed the border. A hard ride will cut him off. So saddle up. We're leaving in five minutes. You let me go. Follow up, Jimmy. Follow him another. Delicious, Miss Chadwick. A dish for an epicure. What do you call it? It's just plain old-fashioned pot roast, Mr. Trask. A dish such as this deserves a better name. What are they doing to him out there? What are they doing? Unbelievably tasty. Come and join me. Good food like any work of art must be shared to be enjoyed 
Please, I, I can't stand anymore. Make him stop, please. Patience, Miss Chadwick. It isn't always easy for men of business to arrive in an agreement. I usually try to avoid such sordid bargaining. However, if you please, Mr. Pitts. Bring him in! Oh, 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 Henry, get them what they want. Never. But they'll kill you, they'll stop at nothing. You might do well to listen to your wife, sir. No. No. A little smoke, Mr. Pitts. Maybe next time I'd be in a more agreeable frame of mind. Oh, no! 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 Oh, no, please! Get him out of here. All right, boys, man up. When Mr. Chadwick regains his senses, you might tell him that my terms remain the same. 20% of my estimate of his income. I'll call again about the time your house is rebuilt. Good day, madam. Thank you for that delicious repast. part I always enjoy the best, Mr. Pitts. I don't know. One of these days you're going to cut it just a little bit too fine. <laughs> a calculated risk, Mr. Pitts, adds zest to living, like pepper to dish. Without it, life would be like the poet says, stale, flat, unprofitable. Always just a little too late. Tell you that man's uncanny. We can still catch him, Captain. We're not crossing the Rio Grande. Can't we wink at the law just this once? Don't think I wouldn't like to, just as much as any one of you. But as long as I'm in command, no. Then we'll never get him. We will. One of these days, we'll nab him on this side. Boy, I tell you, if I postpone this wedding one more time, Addie's gonna cause me more trouble than Trask has caused the whole territory. And it's been the same excuse ever since we've been engaged. First, we had to postpone the wedding because of Frank Davis. And after that, what? There just couldn't be any living until the Barco gang was behind bars. And now it's Trask. And after you get Trask, it'll be Trask's brother-in-law. Oh, and I... come on, you don't even know if he's married. I am serious, John. Now, I've made up my mind. You ask for two weeks? All right, two weeks it is. Or the wedding is off for good. Addie. I mean it. Addie. Jo a girl has just so much time. Now, I love you, and I want you, and I, I think you're the most wonderful. But there is a limit. Now, don't you understand that? There's a limit. Excuse me, folks.
folks, I uh, would have knocked except there isn't any door. Good thing, too, or I'd poke your head through it. What do you want? Well, you and me are going to Dallas. To Dallas? What for? We're escorting Mrs. Barco to her trial. That's a three-day ride. Oh, yes, ma'am, but uh, Mrs. Barco's a very lively lady. With her along, the time will just fly. Uh, yeah, okay, Ben. I'll uh, see you back at the barracks. Oh, uh, you better not stay up too late, Johnny boy. We leave at sunup. You better uh, save your energy for the trip. Well. Well what? Well, aren't you going to kiss me goodnight? Well, that use up too much of your energy. Oh, Eddie, for gosh sakes. Hey, Clay. I'll take over for you now. It's about time you got here. I was getting sleepy. How's your hand, honey? I'll live. Come here. I said come here. You're the one who's, um, running off to Dallas with me in the morning? That's what they tell me. You didn't volunteer for it. I think they wanted to surprise me. Sweetie, it's gonna hurt you. I like you, honest. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a lot of time to think in here all by yourself. You know what I've been thinking? You tell me about it in the morning. I've been thinking that if um, things had been different and I'd met you instead of Barco, <sighs> well, we would have made the grandest pair. That's a likely thought. You don't believe a word I'm saying, do you? As a matter of fact, Mrs. Barco, that is a likely thought. That's a very likely thought. Huh? Thank you. Thanks a lot. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, Sam. Take over for me. Hey, where are you going? Hey, come back here. <sighs> I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm coming! What in heaven's name? I'm sorry to bother you, sir, but it couldn't wait. I think I found a way to get Trask. Get Trask. When we caught Barco and his gang, they were on the way to join Trask across the border. Well, don't just stand there. Come on in, come on in. It's cold on my feet. Barco was from Kansas, right? Chances are the Trask never even met him, right? How will I know unless you get to the point? If five or six rangers masqueraded as Barco and his gang, they could move in on Trask. Once in, they could kill or capture him, clean out his bank, and break the backbone of his whole operation. Oh, John, you're out of your mind. How can I possibly give official sanction to such a harebrained scheme? Who's asking for official sanction? All I need is temporary leave for myself and four others. Oh? Huh? You'd be uh, completely on your own, you know. If something went wrong with your plans. I know, I know. And the other men you took along must know that, too. Then I have your permission, sir. You certainly do not. Was if five men want to take leaves of absences for reasons that were personal and important to themselves. Far Thank you, me. sir. What about the Barco woman? Trask must know they always ride together. Well, that's the part that won't be so easy. I tell you what. You get the volunteers, and I'll see what I can do about getting a life-size Mrs. Barco. Yes, sir. All right, let's go over it again. What's your name? Bill Sharon. Yours? Pete Rivers. What's mine? Al Barco. What happened to the rest of the gang? We split up in Montgomery. The rest of the gang will meet us later. Don't look now, boys. But there's $16,000. Wow, what a bonus. I'm glad I volunteered. Where'd you win all that, Captain? It's money confiscated from the Barco gang. I intended sending it to Dallas with Mrs. Barco. But for the time being, I think it'll do more good in Trash Bank at Sandoval. You sure must trust this, Captain. Compared to six lives, $16,000 isn't much of a risk. Six? I only count five of us. Don't forget Mrs. Barco. You have any luck finding her yet, Captain? Well, yes and no, John. You might say we found each other. I'll have you here when you're ready to leave. See you later. He didn't have much to say about the lady, did he? No. I wonder what she's like. Bet she chews tobacco. 
No, she's got to smoke cigarettos. That Miss Barker's got some real nasty habits. Yeah, no decent dame would take a job like that. Ah, uh, don't be too sure. What do you mean? One thing you know for sure you don't know, and that's women. Listen to Charm Boy. Yeah. All right, now, let's go over it again. What's my name? Al Barco. Hey, any sign of him yet? No. Are you sure the captain said he'd bring her here? You heard him. What you know about women that fit on a pinhead? Don't you know they're always late? Think she spooked out the last minute? No, here they come now. Hey, the wife don't look too bad, Mr. Barco. From a distance. Oh, no. Mr. Barco, sir. May I have the pleasure of presenting Mrs. Barco? No. No, sir, not her, not on your life. You get somebody else or it's all off. Johnny, listen now. I, listen. It's all off. Uh, just a minute, my boy. I'm sorry, Adeline, but I want him to know that this was not my idea, even from the start. I figured as much. That's what I get for telling her our plans. We argued about that wedding date just once too often. Pa always used to say, if you can't lick them, you join them. I'm sorry, John. I tried to talk her out of it. I did my best. From now on, it's up to you. Eddie, you're not going to give me any trouble about this, are you? No. No trouble at all. I'm going. No, you're not. Eddie, listen. L listen carefully. This is no Fourth of July picnic we're going on. Where we're going, the fireworks hurt. You understand, don't you? Is it really that dangerous? Well, I couldn't begin to describe how dangerous. Then it's all the more reason for me to go. Listen, I'll put it this way. If anything happened to you, there wouldn't be any life for me anyway. Do you understand that? Okay. That's the way you want it, but... That's the way I want it. Okay, fellas, mount up. We're moving out. Well, don't just stand there. Get on your horse. Yes, sir. <laughs> Glad to have you among us, ma'am. Thank you. Mighty smart of you, John, to uh, charm her into it. Let's go. John? Yeah? Look. How come the honor guard? That's not exactly an honor guard. I don't get it. You will. Men were watching that performance. Remind me to put you in the Christmas play. <laughs> Pull up, that's far enough. This is private property, you're trespassing. Oh, well, we're looking for Dan Trask. So's a lot of other people, so clear out. One favor, friend. When you see Trask, tell him Al Barco was here. Tell him he left Matt because there wasn't no brass band. Hold on. Why didn't you say you were Barco? Well, I figured we was expected. You've been due for two weeks. What held you up? The sun's hot, I'm tired, the animals are galled, and the hired man stands up there asking fool questions. Take me to your boss or I'll blast you off that rock. Straight up the gap, Barco. Let's not overdo things, dear. Keep your 
your eyes peeled. Hey, is that dynamite? What are you going to do with it? That's just in case they follow us too closely on the way back. If there's one thing a woman likes, it's a thoughtful husband. You know it. <laughs> Quite a place. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> You must be Barco. Well, credit somebody in the bunch with some brains. Who are you? I don't like questions, mister, but I don't mind admitting to the name Ricker. King Ricker, lately out of Dodge City? There's only one of them, Barco, and that's me. This is Joe Spa from Dallas. Howdy. Hi. Glad to meet the both of you. Looks like maybe there's some high-class society around here after all. One thing I must impress on you right from the beginning, Mr. Warlock, you don't cut me in on anything. Any deal I'm in on, I run. And my slice comes right off the top. 51%. What's left is for you and your boys. And whether you cut yourselves in or cut yourselves up, that's your business. Barco's outside wants to make a deal with you. The meeting's adjourned, gentlemen. The deal is off. Good day. Hey, Mr. Trapp. You can leave the back way. Come on, fellas. Mr. Barco? Mr. Trask. At your service, sir. I've been looking forward to this meeting with eager anticipation. Yeah, same here, Trask. Mr. Trask, if you don't mind, Mr. Barco. I find it better for morale to observe the amenities. I'm not at all sure I'm gonna like it here. Well, that's your privilege, sir. However, I do maintain a refuge for men of independent spirit, such as yourself, who seek recreation and renewal. Do you follow? Look, all I want is... Tut, tut, Mr. Barco, please allow me to finish. I only wish to add that I permit nothing to disturb our serenity. And to that end, I must ask you to surrender your arms. Right about here's where I leave you, Mr. Trask. My gun and myself haven't been more than a foot apart in 10 years. Take a look at these good boys. Yeah, what about them? Well, that's a police force to maintain order. A grudging concession to one of society's more depressing conventions. These are men of action, Mr. Barco, like yourself. Can you imagine the tragic waste of lives if we all went armed? I think Mr. Trask has a point there, darling. I, for one, will be glad to do as he says. Forgive me, madam. But with me, it is always business before pleasure. If I seem to have ignored you, I would like to correct that impression. I have been keenly aware of you. This the missus. Pleased to meet you. Charm, Miss Baco. I'm uh, sure that we're going to be very happy here. I'm beginning to feel safer by the minute. Your intelligence, Miss Baco, is surpassed only by your beauty. Would you kindly show Madam to her quarters, Mr. Pitts? Yes, sir. Right this way, ma'am. Now, before you go, Miss Baco, I'll be expecting you and your husband for dinner. Do you have something suitable to wear? Well, I wanted to shop in Dallas, but with those rangers on our heels, I really didn't have the time. Well, don't worry. I'll send over something appropriate. Why, thank you, Mr. Trask. You are very sweet. Hey, Pete, you better tag along, see if she doesn't get lost. Before you go, sir, please leave your revolver. I understand you had a very successful year, Mr. Barco. 
Not bad. Then you'll be wanting to take advantage of our bank. And since the bank is also our arsenal, you may deposit your sidearms there at the same time. Looks like I don't have much choice, does it? Sam, get the money. Where is this bank? I'll be happy to show you. Will you stable the guest horses, please, and bring their rifles to the bank? This way, Mr. Barco. Let's go, man. I have invented a simplified system of banking that I'm very proud of. And uh, by the way, the house you'll occupy will be $50 a man. There'll be no charge for Ms. Varko. Our bank, gentlemen. A new depositor, Mr. Younger. Mr. Albert Barco and company. How much you got? 16,000. And six revolvers, if you please, gentlemen. Mr. Crane will bring their rifles. You'll get a receipt for your money and guns. It'll cost you 5% for every month. 5%? You're a bigger crook than I thought you were. <laughs> but think of how soundly you'll sleep, knowing your money and arms are safe. Hey, you know, there's food in the kitchen, curtains on the windows and everything. All the comforts are home, huh? <laughs> He's a strange man, though, that Trask. Yeah, he's a real smart, cultured, high-class gent. Seems a shame to waste all those virtues on one thief. Hmm. Well, here come John and the boys. Thank goodness. Hey, Barker, wait up. Oh, don't tell me somebody knows him. I keep getting the feeling like I know you from someplace. Ever been in Kansas? No. Hey, you don't know me. I'm, uh, I'm sure we've met. I'll remember. Do you know him? Yep. Name is Royal. We worked the cattle drive a couple of years ago. Do you recognize you were sunk? You know it. What do you plan on doing? I don't know, but whatever it is, we better do it in a hurry. Sure you won't have a bite to eat, John? Why well, spoil his appetite? From what I see in a trask, I'll bet he really puts it on the table. Fellas, listen to this and see if it makes sense to you. To break up this outfit, it still comes down to two things. Clean out the bank and get trash. Get him dead, get him alive, but get him. Right? Right. Good. And the sooner we do it, the better. I think sometime just before dawn. The way that bank is guarded, how are we going to get in? Trask. Did you say Trask? What makes you think he'll be so nice? Because if it comes to a choice between the bank and his life, I think he'll settle for the bank. All right. Granted, we get in. How do we get the guns and the money out? You got a buckboard alongside and load her up. Where's the buckboard coming from? Trask stable. Just walk in and ask for it, bold like. Tell him, tell him I'm going to take my wife for a drive. When's all this going to happen? Well, I'll let you know as soon as we get back from dinner. What about Addie? Well, she'll have to go on the buckboard with one of you. You work out the details for yourself. And you? I'll be the last one out. I'll manage. Like throwing rocks at him? Well, maybe you could make out a withdrawal slip and get me a gun from the bank. Well, how do you like it? Well, now, you just go take that off. Why? Well, you're not going out dressed like that. John, I'm not me. I'm Mrs. Barco, remember? Well, let's not overdo things, dear, remember? Trask sent this dress over for me especially. Well, you send it back to Trask especially. Tell him you want something more... more. Well, that certainly doesn't sound like Mrs. Barco. You're not going out in public dressed like that, especially when the public is Dan Trask. Now, that's final. Why, John Slaughter, you're jealous. I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. <laughs> you are. And now a toast to the first lady to grace our table in many a day. Well, thank you, Dan, but if you keep drinking to me like that, we'll never be able to finish our dinner. And it's delicious. Pot roast, isn't it? Mm.
please, Miss Baku, do not insult this noble dish. It happens to be the modest masterpiece of a gentlewoman acquaintance of mine. I call it beef a la Chadwick. Dad, if I cooked up something for you, would you name it after me? I find it difficult to associate such lovely hands with stew pots and skillets. Is not to your liking, Mr. Barco? It makes me sick to my stomach, Mr. Trask. There's possibly a dash too much tarragon. I'll speak to the chef. You run a rotten kitchen. When my cook burnt the flapjacks last month, I shot him. <laughs> you have a sardonic sense of humor, Mr. Barco. Is your husband always this amusing? I'm afraid he's really not at his best tonight. Hmm. I'm afraid I'm not either. One would never guess it, madam. As a matter of fact... <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> More wine for the lady, Fernando. The uh, three of us here like this puts me in mind of that romantic old biblical tale of David, Bathsheba, and Uriah. Are you familiar with it, Mr. Barco? I'm an honest robber, Mr. Trask, not a hypocritical Bible shouter. Oh. Well... It seems that uh, David coveted Bathsheba, who was married to this general named Uriah. So David sent Uriah into the first rank of battle, and Uriah was killed. End of story. <laughs> you didn't like that story, Mr. Barco? No, I didn't like that story, sir. I don't like stories about cowards. Precisely my sentiments, Mr. Barco. Now, if I were David, and you were Uriah, I wouldn't send you out to be killed. I'd do it myself. You're welcome to try any time you choose. Would you be challenging me to a duel? I consider your attentions to my wife an insult. If you have any doubt about the challenge... Insolent clod. Ignorant... Kansas dirt heel. If fight's what you want, fight's what you'll get. Pistols, knives, bare hands, six guns, any way you want it. Six guns is fine with me. Then six guns it is. The corral at dawn. Me against you and how many others? There'll only be two revolvers on the field of honor, Barco. Mr. Barco. You have my word. As a gentleman? As a thief, Barco. A thief with honor. What more do you want, a contract written in blood? I'll settle for your word. Let's go. Quick! Well, the man's insane. It's unbelievable. It's like a nightmare. Are you talking about John, ma'am, or Trask? Well, come to think of it, I'm not at all sure. John played right into his hands. He has to fight a duel with him in the morning. Have you ever heard anything more crazy? That settles it. Now we have to leave tonight. No buts about it. Has everybody had his say? As far as I'm concerned, the way things went is just fine. Everything stays the same. The buckboard, the bank, everything. They'll all be on hand for the gunfight, so all you have to worry about are the guards. Armed guards? It would help a mite if we had some guns on our side. Will this do? Where'd you get that? Hmm. Never you mind. See, Mrs. Barco always carried a spare. So I thought it might be a good idea if I did, too. Well, if there's one thing a man likes, it's a thoughtful wife. Just in case Mr. Trask intends to fight that duel with him holding both the guns. Thank you, Addie. But I think Ben's gonna have better use for it. You make sure you got a saddle horse for me at the bank. And set that dynamite off at the gap whether I'm through or not. Whether I'm through or not. Now, that's an order. John, you don't intend to actually go through with this duel. I've got to, Andy. I don't want to, but I've got to. Besides, it'll give Ben the time he needs with those guards. Trask will have you covered four ways from the middle. You won't have a prayer. I think I will. I think Trask is just crazy enough to deal this hand off the top. You mean you're stuck? 
There's nothing else you can do but go through with it. That's what you really mean. <laughs> You're sure our bird hasn't flown, Mr. Royal? We got men at all three passes. We would have heard. Here he comes. Alone? My fight, nobody else's. I had expected you to be accompanied by a second. After all, this is a formal duel. Seconds are for losers. I don't aim to be carried off. You are a man of iron, aren't you, Mr. Barco? If you don't mind, let's get to the business at hand. I haven't had breakfast yet, and I'm getting hungry. Please check your revolver, Mr. Barco. I seek no advantage. I do hope you bad, Mrs. Barco a tender farewell. However, it's any consolation, I'm sure I'll find her utterly irresistible in black. We've had enough talk about my wife. Let's get to the fighting. Any time, Mr. Barco. Hold it just a minute. His name's not Barco. It's Slaughter. John Slaughter. I used to punch cows with him. Then I heard he joined up with the Rangers. This man's not one of us. He's one of the law. What's the matter, Mr. Trask? News kind of shake your confidence? Not in the least, Ranger. It only makes the pleasure keener. They say the man on the right has the edge. So I'll let you go first. That came from the bank. Hey, they're getting in the bank. Come on, boys, let's get out of here. They didn't clean this out. Yeah, we've got to get them before they reach the river. this way. That block trail will give us the extra time we need.
fine. And find me a gun. It's been nice knowing you, boys. They're turning back. Look! Dad, we can't pin a medal on you, Eddie. This outfit's gonna miss you as much as it will John. We're gonna miss the outfit too, Captain. <laughs> you speak for yourself, John, not me. Don't you fellas forget about the wedding a week from Saturday. I want you to all be there, here? Yeah? We'll be there. Oh, we'll be there, don't worry. Goodbye, Come on, Captain. John. Ben? Bye, right, John. Take care now. Oh, uh... Captain, I've uh, gotten kind of partial to this white hat of mine. You don't mind if I just keep right on wearing it, do you? That's up to your new boss. Providing you wear it right. Honey, can you cook? Of course I can cook. Could you cook a pot roast? To John Slaughter, I'll never cook a pot roast as long as I live. There. <laughs> I give up. <laughs> Come on, John. Come on, John. Bye, Bye Johnny. I got a feeling he's gonna find ranching awfully peaceful. I don't know. With a man like Slaughter, nothing stays peaceful. At least not for long. In Texas, a ranger he had to become, and at love he defied. Oh, Texas, John Slaughter made them do what they oughta, cause if they didn't, they died. He turned up white Stetson and pearl and a 